I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily communion meditation, where today we're talking about what do you call it? What do you call it? Lately, we've been talking about this concept of calling on the Lord, calling on the name of the Lord. And if you followed us at all over this last year, we've been talking about this idea of filling up the basket of praise. We've talked about the example of two baskets on a balancing scale. On one side, you got a basket full of the issues and problems that we face. We could fill that basket up with venting and complaining and pouting, toiling away in our mind and stress and frustration. Or we could cast those cares into that basket and we could turn around and we could start filling up the basket of praise. And we've talked about lately starting out with praising God for who he is. That he's our healer, he's our provider, he's more than enough. He's the God of all grace, the God of all hope, the God of all comfort, the God of all peace. He's light, he's love, he's an ever-present help. He's our righteousness and our sanctification and our holiness. He's the Lord Almighty, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We can start praising him for who he is. And I think it's part of a, a progression that I'm learning from God right now is I believe when we have an issue or a problem, we start calling on the name of the Lord. You got an issue in your health, you start calling on the Lord who is the one who heals you. He's your healer. You got an issue in your finances, you start call calling on the God who's more than enough. He can make all grace abound to you. He's the, the one who provides. You got an issue just with a bad habit you're struggling with, you start calling on him that who is your righteousness. That he is your righteousness. He's going to transform your behavior. We start calling on him. And then we start getting into the promises of God. We start filling up that basket of praise. For whatever problem we threw into that basket, there's a promise God has given us. He's given us all these promises in Christ. And all the promises in him are yes and amen. But then we can take those promises as an example, we'll take health in our body. God is our healer. We start with calling on the healer. We call upon him. And then we start calling upon these promises. That we've been healed by the stripes of Jesus. That God desires above all things that we would prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. That Jesus was willing to heal when he was in the Gospels. God's made us some promises about health in the Bible. We start calling and asking for those promises. But then we got to believe we receive them. And then we got to believe, start changing what we call the situation. And I was just thinking about this the other day. I heard someone teaching on this recently. Talking about how in the case of Abraham in the Old Testament, God promised him he was going to have the promised child. God gave him this promise that he was going to have Isaac. But for 24 years, nothing happened. But then God changes Abraham's name. He changes his name from Abram to Abraham. And Abraham means the father of many nations. He started changing what he was calling himself. He started changing what he was calling the situation. And within the next year, the promised child was born. He began to change what he called it. Now, was Abraham lying when he's going around telling everybody, my name is Abraham, I'm the father of many nations, even though I don't have any children? Was he lying? I don't think he was lying. He was saying what God said. He was getting into agreement with what God says. For example, we could see in our finances that God is the God of all grace. Corinthians tells us he can make all grace abound to us, having all sufficiency in all things, we can abound to every good work and be generous on every occasion. And that whole passage is talking about finances. And then we can see promises like God promises to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. When you've got the needs, you've got the financial pressure, what do you call it? You receive that promise from God, but then what do you call it? Do you call your needs met? Or do you keep filling up that other basket, complaining about the problem, venting about it, toiling away in your mind, trying to figure it all out? What are you going to call it? Changing the way we speak about the situation. 
something God has taught me to do throughout the years is to change the tense in which I speak. Say, I had that problem, which is true. I had it 30 seconds ago. I had it 10 seconds ago. I, ha I had that problem. But in the present moment, I'm believing God is fulfilling that promise. I'm receiving it right now in the present moment. What are we going to call that problem? As we begin to call it what the promise says, we get into agreement with what the promise says. We get that coming out of our mouth. We get into agreement with God. These beautiful things just begin to happen, I'm learning. So Heavenly Father, we are asking for your help today. Teach us about this. Think about what was Adam and Eve's job in the Garden of Eden was to name things. What are we going to name things? What are we going to call things? What we call them, they'll often begin to change the circumstances I found. Heavenly Father, teach us about this. Teach us what we need to know about this. Help us to understand it. Help us to practically apply this and to walk in this consistently. Because I believe it plays a very big role in helping us to walk in the promises that you have for us. This year, we've been talking about the beautiful land. 2022, the year of the beautiful land. How you promised in the Old Testament you're going to give the people the most beautiful of all the lands in the world. And that's symbolic for us of this promised land. All these promises that we have in Christ. These beautiful promises. These precious promises as it says in Peter. Help us to be partakers of them by learning how to call upon you. To call upon your name. And to call things the right way. The way that you see them. Not the way we see them to get in agreement with you on those things. This is not denying that there's issues. You can acknowledge that there was an issue there. But then we got to get in agreement with what God's word says. Leave it in the past. Let's get in agreement with what God says. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you on the night Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We'd all missed it. We'd all gone astray and God laid upon Jesus the punishment that we deserved. And by his stripes, we've been healed. He was crushed. He was destroyed. He was smitten by God so that we could be right and holy and perfect in his sight. All through his one sacrifice. And God raised him up from the dead and seated him at his right hand. And he raised us up together with him, made us sit together with him in heavenly places. And communion is supposed to be a celebration of our union with God. Being joined together with him as one again. All through the sacrifice of Jesus. What do we call ourselves? Do we call ourselves one with God? What do we call our relationship with him? We can start there. So Father, I thank you for this bread. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. And it's the forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness. And transfers us into the light. Into the kingdom of your dear son. Into the kingdom of Jesus. And he's a great king. His blood washes us and cleanses us. Gives us his fresh start in life. We get to walk out this day today in partnership with God. So, Father, I thank you for this cup. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your juice, you can take your juice. Now, I can see, and I wrestled with this for a while, some people struggling with this. 
Because, you know, if I'm having an issue, i got to say I have an issue. I can't just deny it. And we're not denying that there's an issue. But we're going to start speaking what God has said about it. One of the ways for us to start practicing this is in our health and fitness. I've seen this working in the gym business, had a personal training business for a number of years. People come in, and what do they call themselves? They call themselves never able to lose weight. They call themselves not able to do that exercise. This issue is never going to get better. They start putting all these labels on themselves that are not true. If you got a problem, we all know just talking about it, inventing about it, and complaining about it is not going to do anything for it. It's probably just going to make it worse. We all know that intuitively. You start to change what you call it. You'd be amazed at what it does. But it's a different way of thinking. It's a different way of operating our life. But I believe it's God's way. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to AboundantLifeTrainingCenter.com.